Hello, my name is Brett Molino, and in this tutorial, I'll be going over the use case for JSON message authentication. The main application for JSON message authentication is DC metering, which applies across many industries such as data center, communication, transportation, industrial, and renewable energy. For these industries, it's critical that measurements given by DC meters are accurate and have not been tampered with because the amount of power determines the cost for the customers. We can use one of Microchip's secure ICs, like the ECC204 that you see here, to ensure the validity of JSON messages that communicate the measurements from DC meters. Our secure ICs are also easy to implement in your design, with low power consumption, fast execution of operations in the hardware, and of course, hardware protection for keys and tamper-resistant packaging. Here we have our use case architecture. And on this side, we have our DC meter that is going to act as our client device. Then on this end, we have our host, which is our data concentrator, which will likely communicate to the DC meter over the air. In this use case, you really only need a secure IC on the DC meter, because your data concentrator will likely have the computational power to run these cryptographic algorithms. However, in this example, we're going to use an ATECC608 as our host device. To provision this use case, we'll have a signer private key, a root private key, and a device private key. We'll also be creating two compressed certificates for this use case. So the first thing we'll do is generate a root public key from the private key and load it onto the data concentrator. Next, we'll generate a signer public key and load it onto the signer certificate, and then sign it with the root private key. Lastly, we'll load it onto the meter. Next, we'll create the device certificate. So we'll generate a device public key and then place it on the device certificate. Then we'll sign it with the signer private key and place it on the meter as well. For the infield execution of this use case, when the meter wants to send a JSON message to the data concentrator, it will first send its signer certificate with the signature and public key to the data concentrator where the data concentrator will run it through an ECDSA verify function with the root public key to verify that the signer certificate was signed by the root private key. Next, we'll do the same thing for the device certificate. The meter will send its device certificate and we'll take the signer public key from the signer certificate we received earlier and hash it with the device certificate to verify that the signer private key signed the device certificate. The data concentrator will then send a random number challenge to the meter, and the meter will sign it with its device private key and send it back to the data concentrator. The last step, the data concentrator will take the device public key, the random number challenge, and the signature and run it through an ECDSA verify function to then finally have the JSON message authenticated and we know that it hasn't been altered from its original form. So what we'll need to perform this use case is the Trust Platform Design Suite software, MP Lab software. For hardware, we'll need the Crypto Auth Trust Platform Development Kit and the ECC 204 Microbus Evaluation Board. And then finally, you'll just need your laptop and a micro USB cord. So here are the development kits that we'll be using. Here we have our Crypto Auth Trust Platform Development Kit. And here is our ECC204 Microbus Evaluation Board. Now for this use case, on our Crypto Auth Trust Platform Development Kit, we have two switches here. And the first switch, switch one, will be in the on position up towards the micro USB port, and switch two will be in the off position. Now when you go to attach your micro bus evaluation board, 
all you need to do is look for the slanted line here and the slanted corner on your microbus evaluation board and line them up and pop the two boards together. Then you can plug in your micro USB cord into your computer and the lights will light up and you're ready to go. Here I have opened the Trust Platform Design Suite software. And the first thing we'll do is go to Configurators. Then you're going to select the ECC 204 Truck Trust Flex Auth. And this will open the configurator. So here we're not going to select any of the use cases. What we're doing is setting up our slots so that they're ready to receive those compressed certificates and private keys. So all we need to do is select our device interface, which is I squared C, and disable the limited key use. Then we'll scroll to the bottom and click this middle button here called Provision Prototype Samples. This will load the configuration onto our development kit. So we'll press OK and OK. Now our development kit is ready with the correct slots for us to provision the correct information. So we'll go back to the Trust Platform Design Suite and go to Use Cases. We'll scroll and find the JSON message authentication. And when we scroll down to the device options, we have only the ECC 204 Trust Flex Auth. This opens a use case window where at the top we have a description of the use case. If we click this arrow, we have our cryptographic assets list, which tells us what's in each slot. And here's the steps for implementing the use case. When we scroll down, we have a transaction diagram that we will use to provision our development kit. So all you need to do is make sure that your development kit is selected up here with the green check mark. And then you can use the transaction diagram. So we'll click one and it'll ask us for an organization name, which I will just use my name, Brett, and click OK. We also see in this window here the output from our execution. And if we scroll down, we can see that step one was executed successfully. For our next step, we'll authenticate the meter certificates. And here we can see that was done successfully. For our next step, we will generate the JSON message and the digest. And to generate that digest, we'll use the crypto auth lib function ATCAB underscore SHA. We'll enter our string. You have the option to load a JSON file. However, I'll just use a string message. and click OK. And we can see step three was executed successfully. Next, we will assign our message digest with the function ATCAB underscore sign. And lastly, we will do step five, which is verify the message on the host. And we'll use the SHA-256 and ECDSA verify functions. And here at the bottom, we can see that the use case execution is complete and all the steps were submitted successfully. Now, our next steps after provisioning our first development kits, you can either continue to provision development kits to use for prototypes, or you can request your first verification units. So to Request your first verification units. We'll go back to the Trust Platform Design Suite window and click Secure Exchange Process. This opens you to a Secure Exchange Process questionnaire that you will fill out with details about your project, specifically for the ECC 204. Once you fill out the information for each of these fields, you'll download the user data 
And this file is what you will upload to Microchip via your My Microchip account. Microchip will then send back an RSA key that you will use to download an encrypted provisioning package that you will send back to Microchip to provision your verification units. So to get the encrypted provisioning package, we'll go to Configurators and click the ECC204 TrustFlex Auth Configurator. This time around, we'll select the asymmetric authentication use case, and we'll scroll down and select our device interface and disable the limited key use. Next, we'll input some values for our certificates and our key. So we'll go to slot one and we'll click custom certificate. This will allow us to insert some values for our device and signer certificates. So for our device certificate, we have an organization name required. I'll just put Brett. And then the validity in years for the device certificate. I'll just put one and verify. Next, we'll enter information for the signer certificate. So I will enter an organization name again. It then requests a common name, which I will just put microchip, and then validity in years, and verify. The last thing it asks us to do is enter information for our key. So we'll enter the organization name and the common name, click verify, and then it allows us to upload our key. Now we can either do this using hex data or through a .pem file. I'm going to use hex data and then I'll click verify. Once we verify our key, we can then click generate encrypted provisioning package, assuming that we've already received our RSA key from Microchip. And a window will pop up requesting the key, which you will upload as a zip file, and the file will then be downloaded to your computer. And then you'll continue back to your My Microchip account and upload it to Microchip. The other options we have in the configurator are for prototyping, if you aren't ready for production and you continue prototyping, you can click one of these buttons here. The process is the exact same. You fill out the certificate information and the key information, but use dummy key and certificate information. Only use your real project information when you go to generate the encrypted provisioning package. So when prototyping, and you click the Generate Provisioning Package button here, it will download the file to your computer. If you want to provision just one development kit that is attached to your PC, you can click this button here. Thanks for watching this tutorial on JSON message authentication. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the Microchip channel for updates on new videos for more information on JSON message authentication, please look to the description below, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.